Did you wish the PS5, this big bish right here, was just a little bit more portable? Maybe with a clamshell design like the Nintendo DS, flip open that screen, start gaming wherever you want. Go sit down at Starbucks, get some coffee, a little frappuccino action, go to Del Taco, get a half pound green burrito, make it bold, and just start playing PS5 on their own power? Yeah, I mean portable in the sense that you just go about your business, take it wherever you want, plug it in and go without having to worry about dragging a bunch of stuff with you. I'm sure we could find a way to portably power a PS5, but you know, with the solutions we have out there with portable batteries, nothing like this is gonna have enough juice type of thing. You gotta have enough wattage and whatnot. But I'm, I'm talking about just plugging in and playing. And if those are what your dreams and ambitions are in life, G-Story here, these fools, they may have you covered with this integrated monitor for the PS5. I thought this was really neat when I first saw it. So essentially it becomes part of the PS5 and you could still have it plugged into your TV, unplug it, take it where you wanna go, plug it in, and you have a monitor as part of it. I thought that was really cool. So I wanted to check this out, see you know, what kind of quality we're getting here. Cause G-Story, I mean, I've looked at a lot of their stuff. I've played with some of their previous monitors. I remember the one for the PlayStation Classic was pretty cool, that monitor case. So taking a look at this thing, um, the box doesn't really list too much as far as the way the specs go. It does state it's 15.6 inch screen. HDR with FreeSync, uh, and then the back of the box, like the sides, there's really not a lot being explained on the box as far as what we could see here. Open or close the monitor, and be completely integrated with the PS5. That's what we want. Stronger functions, specially designed for the PS5. We'll be the judge of that. Multiple interfaces and function keys, okay. So I mean, not a lot listed here. Um, what does it say on the bottom? Please do not use sharp objects to touch the monitor. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much a given, homie. We, we ain't doing all that. We ain't gonna try to clean the screen with a frickin' razor blade. But according to the listing on Amazon, this is an IPS panel, 4K HDR. The sRGB rating is 99.99% with eight bits of color depth. And we have FreeSync and G-Sync. So I'll put up whatever else is listed on the screen so you can take a look at that. But let's go ahead and get this thing out of here. I haven't tested this out yet. This is kind of a... Let's record a video and test it out live, get my initial reactions to this thing. Any kind of party fouls, any kind of uh, mishaps. If it just doesn't work out the box, we'll, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. That's what we doing here today. Let me go ahead and open this up. There we go. This box, it, I like when I first received it, I was like, this thing feels extremely freaking light. And if you're wondering about the black PS5, I did do a video on that recently on the D brand skin thingy, whatever it's called. Um, take a look at that if you're interested. So what do we have here? We have a power supply. We have uh, some, some materials, user manuals and stuff and a little, uh, what is that? Like eight inch maybe HDMI cable. I would imagine to sync, like to plug the back of this into this maybe. Well, not maybe. Oh, there's some batteries right there. Oh, we have a remote. We have a remote. Oh, snap. We have the G-Story remote. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's get this thing out. Now, this looks like it would integrate a lot nicer with the, uh, the original white shells, but as I have removed those, I mean, we're just gonna have to deal with what we have here. So, wow, okay. This is pretty slim um, from the looks of it. It feels like it's about a couple pounds. There's that, you got the front, some ports there. Um, hmm. Ports on the back. I guess like you sync that to this and then the other HDMI you could plug back into the TV if you needed to. Let's, let's take a look here. Oh, that, that looks cool. You got two speakers built in. Bunch of buttons here. Menu, source, enter, left and right, and then power. Okay. That's cool. That looks cool. Okay, I'm gonna have to open this up and, and see how they explain to set this up. I'm sure we need to remove the stand, which I don't, man, I like having it that way. Maybe the stand could still stay on there. What is this? Registration cards. Don't need to worry about that too much. 
And then in the manual, it's in like 50 languages, it looks like, or maybe it's just in Chinese and English, I'm not sure. Remove the upper cover and then just put that cover on. Okay, sandwich, sandwich it on. Oh, it has the installation for the Xbox one as well. So yeah, let me know down below, which, which is your preference, Xbox Series X or PS5? Because I will be doing an Xbox version of this video as well as I have the one made for the Xbox Series X also. So we'll be taking a look at that, but okay, let's go ahead and get this party started. Mm. I guess first up is to remove the stand. Okay, we got the stand off. Let's set that aside. We, we may be able to put the stand back on. Okay, that isn't as intrusive as I thought, to be honest. That is actually looking pretty cool. Okay, so here's a little view of the back. We got everything plugged in, power, the HDMI from the system to the monitor, and we have a little stand on the bottom just so it doesn't get all scuffed on this table. Now, the one thing I found out from further inspection is that these two HDMI ports marked one and two, neither of them are output, so, Essentially, if you leave this on, you wanna plug it into your TV, you would still have to use the port on the PlayStation. It's not gonna output from that. Uh, they're different specs. So HDMI one here is for 1080p, HDMI two is for 4K. So that's one thing to keep in mind with this device here. But there we go, a little bit of uh, cables back there, but let's turn it around and take a look at what we have happening here. Okay, so here's the full frontal of the system all plugged in together, everything looking good. The screen quality, I mean, the viewing angle is pretty damn good from my perspective here, but let's zoom up a little bit. Check out some of the uh, on-screen display stuff because it does come with this, this remote, uh, some options on the front, which are just all mimicked on the remote, so we don't really need to use that. Okay, so before we get into the remote and the on-screen display, let's take a look at the video output information. So yeah, we're at 4K 60 Hertz, HDR lists all our frequencies that we have available, all that information. So we are using that HDMI port two. Don't know why HDMI port one is 1080p only, kind of strange, but okay, whatever. Now with this remote, we do have several buttons, as you can see, F1, P, and F2 in the middle there, up, down, left, right, okay, source is pretty self-explanatory, menu, exit, and scale. Left and right's just for volume, up and down are like quick shortcuts. And then these F1, P and F2, I'll go ahead and do those. Now I do have to be like about a foot, foot and a half away from the system for this remote to actually register. So pressing F1 gives you the low blue option. Turn that off or on, exit out of that. The P button in the middle is for the eco mode. And then F2 is the overdrive mode. So if we press up, on the little D-pad thing. It gives us like a quick menu for game mode, black level, free sync, G-sync, on or off, HDR, and LOS. So nice. Now if we exit out of that, if we press down on the D-pad, we get like various little sites that we could use to cheat on in first person shooters if you wanna use that. So you could just press down and select which one you like. Exit, exit from that just removes it. Cool. Now, if we hit menu, it brings up the main menu with all our basic features that we can adjust, brightness, contrast, volume, color, temperature, and that fast set option. Picture set gives us pretty much everything else. Sharpness, black level, DCR, which is, uh, I believe, dynamic contrast ratio, which I never use that. If you turn it on, the screen's always adjusting, just looks booty. Uh, your eco mode, you can go FPS one, FPS two, and then RTS. So those are gonna be your different options or standard, photo, uh, movie, game, that kind of thing. The FPS and RTS are specific gaming modes. Then you also have your low blue, your noise reduction, which I always leave off. Color temperature, uh, gamma, you can adjust that down all the way off or up. I'm gonna leave it at 2.2, I think is the default. And then you have hue, saturation, 
six color option, what is that? Oh, like you can really go in depth with the colors. And then dynamic luminous control. That's gonna be another thing similar to uh, like the dynamic contrast ratio where it, it could be funky. So I, I don't typically use those options. And your aspect ratio option as well. And then sound set. Sound set, you have your volume, then your treble, bass, balance, and then mute. And then in the general set, you have all the stuff that was pretty much in that quick option for overdrive, free sync. You can change the input source between HDMI 1 and 2, auto power saving, change the language options, OSD transparency, timeout. And then you can factory reset all the options to what the defaults were. So pretty cool stuff. So overall, I really like this. I mean, the way it integrates with the PS5, how it just sits on there as it's a replacement for one of the, uh, the plates. I, I really like the design behind this. The screen quality is really nice. Now, overall, the, the entire thing, it's fairly lightweight. I mean, but the quality behind it, it doesn't seem overly cheap or anything. I just really like the design behind this, how they did everything. And a lot of people, you know, may have a, a use for something like this. And I've, I've always been interested in these things back in the day for previous consoles that have been out, like making them portable. Cause every console's pretty much had stuff like this in the past where you could put a screen on it. But this one, just the way they designed it being a replacement plate to where it becomes part of the system, I, I thought was really cool. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. I, I mean, no huge complaints here. Sure, I mean, little nitpicks, the remote doesn't work. If I'm right on top of it, it's a little iffy. I have to be kind of farther back, not a big deal. You also have buttons on the front that can do everything this does. So, I mean, minor nitpick. One other thing would be the speakers. Uh, you know, they're not the highest quality speakers. There's one right here, one over here. So it's kind of, kind of strangely situated. It sounds okay. Uh, not too bad, but yeah, I mean, you're not getting too much power behind those speakers there. To remedy that, if you want, you could always, you know, plug in a headset to your, you know, your DualShock, or I keep calling these DualShock, DualSense controller, or you, you do have, um, you know, 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks in the front. You got two of them there. So you could use those if you want to plug in or plug in another speaker or something. So that is an option. Uh, the only other thing that's, a bigger nitpick, in my opinion, is not having like an output HDMI on the back. That way you don't have to fiddle around with cables, like just plug it into your TV. And you don't have to worry about unplugging the cable from this that goes into the PS5. That would have been cool, but eh, you know, you have two HDMIs. I, after thinking about that and dwelling on it a little bit, I understand, you know, the one is for 4K, so use that one for the PS5. The other one, I guess if you want to plug something else into it, play the Nintendo Switch on here, why not? I mean, you could always do that if you want. Plug anything else into it in that uh, HDMI 1 port that's on there. So pretty cool, man. If you guys want to check this out, I'll put a link in the description to where it's available on Amazon. I'm not sure if they're currently in stock. I've seen they've been messing with the uh, listing lately. So take a look. Uh, really, really neat device. I'm actually really digging this one. So, hey guys, really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. With that said, we'll catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. Big ass thumb button in your face. Blurry like a Bigfoot. And boom. Bye.